Hello everyone and welcome back to the Wolf Pack. Now today is one of those days where we're just trying to rake in some energy to get through the rest of the weekend. And to do so, I actually, not only do I need to crack open a Red Bull can, it's too lazy to make coffee today, but I also actually need to do some major reorganizing and cleaning of the studio because I can't even think straight seeing this entire clutter and mess all over the floor. I was filming some, some TikToks and some Instagram reels uh, all across the bottom here. So that's why there's all these games on the bottom. Need some major reorganization because there are a ton of games just all over the place. Games that I've covered, games that I didn't cover, expansions that aren't with the base games. It's just, it's a mess. And my brain right now has some brain fog just looking at this. So we're gonna clean today. But I also wanted to ask all of you a really interesting question that kind of came up when I was playing Ankh. So my group actually didn't like this game, but I, I love this game a lot. And it kind of just got me thinking about the thumbnail question. The title of today's video should go something along the lines of this, which is, does your first playthrough even count? Or should your first playthrough count at all? And the reason why is because there are so many things that can affect that first gaming session that if you have a bad experience in any way, shape or form, it's gonna affect the game. And it could be that that game actually is a good fit for you, you just played it on the wrong day. That's actually one of the first ones is if you're not in the mood to game and you kind of force yourself to play games, that's gonna first that's going to affect your first playthrough. And guess what? You're probably not gonna have a good impression of it too. So that's one reason why I feel like your first playthrough shouldn't even count. Let's talk about number two. I almost guarantee that you're gonna get the rules wrong on your first playthrough run. Like I always do at least. And I feel like it's so easy to make a mistake. And even if you did get all the rules right, I can almost guarantee that you're gonna run into some kind of question when it comes down to your first gaming session of said game. Reason number three, let's say you get all the rules right. Let's say that you have no questions about gameplay at all throughout the entire first gaming session, which is already a major set of obstacles to get through. There's a very low chance that the action that you take, the decisions that you make, are going to be the most effective, most efficient decisions for that game. In other words, are you really gonna play your best game on that first playthrough? It's interesting too, because a lot of the times, actually, this is what's going to cause us to want to play again, like for a second round, because we know what to do now from this first like practice run. And so now going into the second gameplay, we can make better decisions. And therefore, it's going to make gameplay even more fun, more entertaining, despite how you feel about the game. At least you are one step closer to experiencing the game for what it should be, right? Right? All of my party games on this shelf and my Yu-Gi-Oh deck. Ooh, should I show you all of my Yu-Gi-Oh cards? Okay, a quick funny story. So I was actually, I was an undergrad and I went to a local card shop uh, right after class was over. This is when like we were really into Yu-Gi-Oh and I bought one booster pack, whichever one that Trish was in. And this was like the most coveted card at the time. I think it was worth like hundreds of dollars, at like at least 300 at the time that Trish uh, first came out. This is the card that was on the booster pack. So it was super, super rare to find. It was like ultimate rare. And as I was going through my cards, I opened this one and it literally blew my mind. Like I stood for a second, I swear to you, my hands were like actually shaking. My hands never shake. My hands like shaking, just staring at this. And I legit screamed in my car, opening this booster pack. And I called like all my Yu-Gi-Oh friends and we were just having a ball. Everyone was trying to offer me like $80, $90 for this one card, but I kept it and I never sold it. I don't know how much it's worth now, but it was, uh, it was probably the most exciting booster pack I've ever opened. Oh, how funny. Yeah, this was my ABC Dragon Cannon deck. This was really strong too at that time. Wow, I actually totally forgot I started something like this, but yeah, this was a really powerful deck at one moment, but it got crushed real quick because of all the rules that came in that absolutely destroyed this deck. So it no longer became meta. Oh, since I was cleaning up the party shelf as well, the next point I wanted to bring about the question behind the first playthrough is the group that you're playing with, like imagine if you play with a bad group, but you play a good game, guess what's gonna take precedence? I'm pretty sure the bad group is going to highly affect how you've experienced that game. And I feel like it would really put a bad taste on that game and make you not wanna play again if you play with the wrong group. 
and I actually had that experience recently too. So I normally get really, really good gaming groups uh, and experiences, but we've, I've been experimenting and just playing with brand new groups, you know, it's always fun. I also think that I can judge people pretty well and see where their tastes align, but you know, everyone's different, who knows. For me, this was a game that I've already played plenty of times already, so even like how I experienced it then, it didn't really affect my thoughts on it now, and I'm actually gonna do a full review on it. And uh, I was going through it, and I just feel like the group that I was playing with were pretty inconsiderate in terms of like timing and stuff. It, like, I don't mind people having analysis process, but if it goes to the point where it's not fun anymore to have to wait and they don't like think about their turns until it gets to their turn, that kills me, I tell you right now. I have so much patience for gaming because if we even have a chance to game, like my mood is just like way up. Like it's really hard to knock down my happy mood to get a chance to play a game. So like you have to really, 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 really knock me down 10 pegs to get to that point. So group I was playing with, they just didn't want to think about their turns until it got to their turn. It kills me once, fine, twice, okay, but like, I'm not even joking you, 15 times or more, and I stopped counting. And that put a huge damper on our game experience. And it is even worse because I like wear my heart on my sleeve and I'm not good at faking it. So there's that. But rant aside, if your gaming group doesn't match the energy of your excitement to play whatever game that you end up playing, I feel like that's gonna affect your initial impression, no? Like I can play some of the worst party games and I play with like the best group, I'm 100% sure that I'm going to enjoy the game way more than intended, or at least than uh, my initial impression of it was. That happened, I think, with Betrayal. Like, I was not interested in that game. I didn't want anything to do with that because I had no combat, of course. And I just was not remotely even thinking about playing that game. Played with my cousins, played with like my fiance. We, was a, we were a pretty rowdy group, but it was incredibly fun and ended up being one of my favorite games to play, so. See? First impressions, I'm telling you. First impressions, first playthrough, they just, so hard to, to use as a measuring factor for reviews. Worker placement. I was stoked when I saw Canvas Reflections come in. And then I realized that I didn't add the base game to my pledge. So now I have the expansion and I can't play it. I got this game two years ago thinking it'd be fun to do for Halloween, but I never ended up doing it. Should I do it this year? Halloween special, <laughs> unsolved case files. Have you all tried this game before? It looked good at the time. It got a lot of good reviews too, so that's why I got it. It's always so hard for me to throw out these expansion boxes, but they take up so much space and ultimately if you can fit everything in one box, gotta throw these away. Gotta throw them away. I've talked about this game before, but this is actually a Cambodian game. Super easy to play. It's pretty much a gambling game. So you have these three dice right here. And all you do is roll these three dice in secret and whatever shows up, it gets uh, becomes a multiplier for whatever's shown here. So if I were to roll, for example, three fish and someone puts a dollar here, someone would get three dollars. Someone puts a five on crab times three, that's fifteen dollars. Now moving on to my Marvel United shelf, that's going to be a problem because oh, like two more boxes showed up for Marvel X-Men. I think it's gonna take up all this. It's kind of excessive, don't you think? I think so. So Marvel Champions, I have a store solution for this, but I still really love the artwork here, so I'm gonna keep these. This is going to be an exception. I also have no idea what this plain white box is. I feel like it's for Street Fighter, but I may be wrong. Okay, now let's talk about the other side of the coin. Let's say, when is it okay for the first impression, the first playthrough to be okay? I feel like if you really know yourself, you know absolutely what you like and what you don't like in a game, 
however arbitrary that sounds, then that's when it would be okay. Let me give you an example. When I played Tainted Grail, immediately I knew this wasn't gonna be a game for me <laughs> because that was the first time I've ever experienced fillers in a board game. Fillers meaning like if you ever watch anime, like there are these episodes that segue off of the main storyline. That's the first time I've ever experienced it. Well, in anime, you, you experience it visually, of course you're watching it. But in board game form, Tainted Grail felt like it led you off of different side quests that didn't have anything to do with the main quest. It didn't level you up. It didn't help you progress at all. It kind of just led you just to have content there. I did not like that at all. So one play and I was done with it. Tainted Grail was an immediate no for me. I've been dying to try this one, Wild Ascent. Okay, we're almost there. I'm actually saving a pile for all of my shelf of shame. Next video, I'm gonna do back to back. Actually, it's gonna be talking about all the games that I haven't played yet. Okay, the last thing I wanted to mention for the first play is this. I think this is one that a lot of reviewers, not gonna point anyone out, but this is one that I see a lot of people go through and that is the honeymoon phase. Like me, I feel like we're more inclined to be blinded by the production value, by how amazing it is, by all the hype and the excitement behind that first initial play. So that's why I think you really need to put in those second plays, those third plays, in order to find out if that game is just as good as that first round playthrough. So that's why I think it's so, so important to push through that first initial gameplay. Like hands down, I was definitely guilty of this when I was first reviewing games in like the beginning stages of my YouTube channel versus now. That's why I always take time to get through at least a minimum always of three plays before I even mention any kind of thoughts on it. Like yeah, if it's fun in the first round, of course I'll post it on Instagram or something. But to give like a full detailed analytical review about the game, I definitely take a lot more time than I used to before. So there's, those are my thoughts on that. All right, looks like I ended up separating it by publisher, but we'll see how that works out. I think I feel like I know the general gist of every single game that I have so far, so I can kind of decipher it as I go. That's my worst weakness. It's not analysis paralysis when playing the game, but it's analysis paralysis when deciding what game to play. So this may not work out for me, but for now, I kind of like how it's organized because I can kind of just categorize them by publisher here. Other than that, next time, maybe I'm gonna try by pure mechanics. So we'll see if this doesn't work out, I'm gonna do strictly mechanics next time. But for now, I think this is good to go. But anyways, thank you all so much for joining in on today's conversation, figuring out whether or not it's worth it to review a game and decide, judge a game, you know, on the very first play. Or should we just wait until we have multiple plays of it? But those are my thoughts on that. I can't wait to see what you all think down below. And I'll see you all in the updated Shelf of Shame, which is gonna come up right after this one. So I'll see you tomorrow.